Chapter 721 Mass Record Restoration The Second Order Zombie watched the silent by Zemin for almost a full minute before suddenly saying, I told you everything I know. Now it's your time to fulfill the deal we agreed on earlier. Mm? By Zemin raised his head, taking his eyes off the ground, and looked at the male zombie. He looked genuinely confused as he asked in a puzzled voice, Fulfill my part of the deal we agreed on. But what was the deal we agreed on? You. The Second Order zombie's eyes widened and his temper threatened to explode on the spot. However, he managed to take a deep breath and after several seconds calmed down enough to say with great difficulty, You promised. You promised that if I answered your questions you would let me go alive. Oh. By Zemin clapped his hands once and his eyes sparkled as if he had just received enlightenment. He nodded and said in a serious voice, Of course, I will keep my word. I won't kill you and I will let you decide whether you want to leave or not. You will let me decide whether I want to leave or not. The second order zombie muttered. Was the male human in front of him crazy? The second order zombie couldn't help but start to think that maybe by Zemin had several screws loose in his head. Forget about deciding whether he wanted to leave this damn place or not, the second order zombie couldn't wait to get away from this damn hell he had fallen into as fast as possible. Of course, first I have to ask you if you want to leave or if you want to stay here with us and work for me. By Zemin nodded with a serious expression on his face. His voice was very matter-of-fact, just like someone stating the obvious. However, in the ears of the Second Order Zombie, Kong Lan, and Fu Xiefeng, Bai Zemin's words really made no sense at all. Was he telling a zombie that he would give it a chance to work for him? Kong Lan and Fu Xiefeng looked at each other a little dismayed. In fact, were it not for the fact that all the other Soul Evolvers were still keeping a respectful distance from the area where the conversation was taking place, it was highly likely that Bai Zemin would secretly start being called a lunatic. I want to leave, I want to leave now. The male zombie immediately made his decision. In fact, there was no decision to make to begin with. The choice was more than obvious. However, Bai Zemin smiled slightly and shook his head slightly as he said slowly, there's no hurry. I haven't asked you yet, have I? The Second Order zombie was not stupid and he immediately realized that the human man in front of him definitely had some scheme in his head. Warning bells started ringing in his head, but no matter when he thought about it, he simply couldn't find a way for the young human to keep his word while making him hesitate about staying or leaving. You. What do you want to do? Give me a moment, Bai Zemin raised his hand to signal him to wait a minute. Without waiting for a reply, Bai Zemin turned around and saw that Kong Jun had thrown around 150 to 200,000 zombies into a giant hole. At some point, the Third Order Ant had surrounded the area with stones to prevent the zombies from passing through easily. The battle had come to an end, at least for now there didn't seem to be any more enemies arriving. Kong Jun! Bai Zemin shouted, his voice broke the distance into pieces and the weaver ant responded immediately, appearing beside him in a matter of seconds. Bai Zemin pointed at the Second Order zombie and ordered in a deep voice, grab and take him to a secluded place. Kong Jun did not say a word and immediately moved to carry out the order given to him. You. What are you doing? Are you breaking your word? I knew that you humans are filthy creatures who don't know how to keep your promises. Are you still a man? The Second Order zombie became frantic as the six-foot giant caught him in a bear hug from which he could not escape no matter how hard he tried. Kong Jun's strength stat was simply too high in comparison, and because he didn't fear zombie infection, he didn't need to worry about things like scratches. Don't worry, I will definitely keep my word. Bai Zemin calmly muttered as he watched Kong Jun drag the second order zombie away. His eyes glittered peculiarly as he said in a voice that only he could hear, it's just that while I will let you live, it will no longer be as a zombie, but you will be human again. You can decide what to do then. Leader, what do we do now? Kong Lan quickly approached Bai Zemin after the Second Order zombie was pushed away by Kong Jun. She took her time to look at the face of the young man in front of her carefully. Even though the face of Bai Zemin had not aged at all and even though his age and hers were similar, Kong Lan couldn't help but feel that aside from having become much more handsome over the past month, the current Bai Zemin seemed to have matured greatly compared to his previous self. In the past, she was just a girl who could be considered even slightly below average with her freckle-filled face, however. The current her not only had perfectly white and smooth skin like that of a newborn baby but her charming body was enough to take any man's breath away. However, the current Kong Lan had never paid attention to any man in the entire faction despite her popularity. Now that she was looking at Bai Zemin, she couldn't help but think that perhaps she had been comparing all this time and for that reason no man could get more than a sidelong glance. At the end of the day, it was hard to look sideways when the back of the person you were following was simply too charming in every way. Kong Lan knew that her talent for magic was superb, of the highest quality. 
Her mentality, like everyone else's, was no longer the same as the one that had accompanied her throughout her life. Why should she settle for little when she could strive for the best? While it was true that she was not in love with Baizemin by any means, Kong Long believed that if she ever wanted to give herself to someone then that man would have to be worthy of her person. Kong Long. Baizemin nodded with a slight smile on his face. His eyes sparkled with praise as he said in an honest voice, you have grown a lot over the past month, not only in level and strength, but also in character and leadership ability. I was watching everything from the sky for a few minutes, do you blame me for not helping sooner? Baizemin expected her to take a moment to answer, however, to his little surprise, she immediately shook her head and while staring him straight in the eyes said in a clear voice, not at all. All of us fight not only to obey orders but we also do so because we have our own goals and desires in our hearts. Some desire strength, others long for peace, to protect their loved ones, to be reunited with their families, to play the hero in times of chaos. Whatever the reason, it is clear to all of us here that every time we go out to the battlefield it could be our last. No one has the right to complain to anyone but themselves for their own weakness. Baizemin was a little astonished, but he soon chuckled and nodded. Is that so? You've really grown up. Kong Lan was as timid as a mouse at the beginning of the apocalypse, Baizemin could remember her old self from four months ago, but it was hard for him to compare her to the confident and assured beauty in front of him. You've grown over the past month too, leader. Kong Lan smiled, which was incredibly rare as she always had a serious expression on her face. Baizemin closed his eyes and smiled without saying anything. Of course, not only Kong Lan had changed. Everyone had changed, even by Zemin himself was no different in this regard. The circumstances they were dragged into had molded them into new ones. Big brother. Fu Xiefeng approached at that moment. He was so excited that he directly called out to Bai Zemin intimately as he did when the group of people around was small and trustworthy. Yo, Xiefeng, Bai Zemin smiled gratefully as he looked at the slender young man that was looking at him with admiration that was impossible to hide. Second order, huh? Not bad, kid. Who would have thought that that skinny little college kid easily intimidated by everyone would become a brave and powerful assassin that his enemies should fear and beware of? He he he. Fu Xiefeng laughed sheepishly and scratched his head with his free hand while holding his dagger with the other. In front of the others, Fu Xiefeng was a rather ruthless killer but in front of Bai Zemin he was like a little brother who enjoyed the praise of the big brother he idolized. If someone knew the history of Fu Xiefeng's past it would probably be hard for them to think that this young man who now did not hesitate to chop heads off actually did not dare to kill a person in college as he was too terrified to do so. All right, let's save the words for later. The expression on Bai Zemin's face turned serious. He surveyed the surroundings and realized that all the soul evolvers in the distance were helping the wounded with what they could while from inside the base modified vehicles were pouring out in numbers. Little Luo Ning looked at Bai Zemin from a distance, giving him puppy eyes that made him smile. However, the little girl was very sensible and mature for someone her age because instead of running to him and hugging him as she urgently wanted and needed, she stayed behind to help the wounded and needy. Several medics climbed down from dozens of vehicles and began to apply emergency treatment to those most in need before loading them onto stretchers made of wood covered in mana and mutant beast hide, before taking them back for more treatment. Kong Lan, go heal Nan Gong Yi first. Then heal those you can so that you can at least save those who can be saved. Bai Zemin ordered. Kong Lan nodded and after a last glance disappeared beyond the walls. Xie Feng, organize the troops. Have the able-bodied soldiers and soul evolvers rest as much as possible, but be alert near the walls in case another attack occurs. All right. After nodding earnestly, Fu Xie Feng left. Bai Zemin sighed and after nodding to some people who greeted him or looked at him with respect he disappeared from his position without a trace and just like a ghost approximately 40 kilometers distance away. W what the hell is that thing? The second order zombie muttered with wide eyes as he stared in shock at the wooden pagoda that rose 10 stories from the ground just like a small building. This is where the magic happens. Bai Zemin replied calmly before silently gesturing to Kong Jun. The third order weaver ant nodded silently and without a word began to drag the male zombie straight towards the wide open door. Hey, where the hell are you taking me? What are you going to do? Bai Zemin ignored the second order zombie's screams and shook his head. Kong Jun threw the intelligent creature straight into the interior of the pagoda and then closed the double door with a loud bang, sealing the male zombie inside. Bai Zemin took out three second order soul stones and powered up his limitless pagoda. The countless runes on the initial floor immediately lit up and the magic circle drawn on the door glowed. The process of record restoration had begun successfully. 
Actually, the reason why Baizemin had not done this before was because he was not sure if the male zombie would lose his memories of his time as a zombie once he returned to being human thanks to the power of the limitless pagoda. After all, Baizemin had only tried with unclassified zombies and first order zombies before but all of them had lost their memories. While it was true that the zombie inside the pagoda at the moment was a second order intelligent existence, Baizemin could not take the risk of seeing if the creature lost his memories after returning to humans since if that happened he would not be able to obtain any information regarding the merman and his plans. Well, something is better than nothing. Baizemin sighed. At least he had managed to get some information from the second order zombie's mouth. Kong Jun remained standing silently. Although he was curious about what was going on inside the mysterious pagoda, no matter how hard he tried he could not feel the slightest energy leaking out from inside so he did not know about the magical process that was going on as he stood by the door. Now, Baizemin turned and walked towards the edge of the artificial mountain that had been born as a product of Kong Jun's fierce attacks. Below, approximately 150,000 to 200,000 zombies were grunting and trying to climb the huge pit they had been thrown into. Baizemin's lips curved upwards and at the same time as hundreds of thousands of soul stones flew out of his special storage ring he said in a low voice, time to create a small evolved force he he. Chapter 722 Bad News After Bad News It had been about two hours since Baizemin had disappeared, and no one in the entire transcendent faction had any idea about what was he doing. Only Kong Lan and Fu Xiefeng felt that it was a bit strange for the leader to disappear in this kind of situation when he had just returned. Moreover, both Kong Lan and Fu Xiefeng had their suspicions regarding what Bai Zemin was doing. Of course, it was not that either of them doubted him in a bad way but they were simply suspicious because of his strange behavior towards the second order zombie, as well as the last words he said regarding giving the creature a chance to work for him and stay with them. Be that as it may, even though the humans had managed to repel the main army, more and more mutant beasts were coming from a distance. Most of the creatures fought each other as they ran rampant across the desolate land, crushing anything that dared to cross their paths. The same was true for the zombies. Small groups of zombies that if grouped together could form a large horde began to approach from all sides as if attracted by something. Fortunately for the establishment, the soldiers on the walls, as well as the archers, were able to take out the zombies before they presented any kind of difficulty for the base while the other soul evolvers took care of the mutant beasts. Standing at the entrance of the base and guarded by two First Order Soul Evolvers, Lu Xiaoyao frowned at the workers who were moving too slowly for her liking and the situation they were in. Hurry up! We need to move as many corpses as possible while we can. The mutant beast flesh could not be wasted in any way which was why all the bodies that did not have poisonous flesh or had not been hit by some poisonous magic skill were immediately taken to the base where they would later be processed. The flesh would be frozen and stored, the soul stones would be taken to the faction's secret storage, the pelts and leathers, as well as the carcasses of natural armor would be dismantled to later be used during the forging of defensive equipment or to reinforce buildings and even the walls. Claws could even be used as weapons right away while tendons could be used for bowstrings or crossbows. Practically nothing was wasted. In this kind of world even the junk could have some use at some point, it was up to everyone to find that use. Standing near the moat, the one twins were standing under the guardianship of little Luo Ning who was cautiously looking at the surroundings while holding her giant sword. Luo Ning, why did you choose a great sword as your main weapon? When Yen, the twin who wore a ponytail, asked. She was holding little Xiao Xiao, the pretty pink dolphin who was currently hard at work using her aquatic skills to clear the moat so that if a large-scale invasion like the previous one occurred the new enemies wouldn't be able to use the old bodies as bridges to reach the base walls. For two reasons. Luo Ning held up two fingers as if to emphasize the fact that there were two important reasons behind her seemingly peculiar choice. She put one finger down and said in a clear voice, first reason, because the path I walk is a very strange one, the path of a magic warrior, the path you walk, m, big brother often uses those words to refer to the class we soul evolvers choose when we reach level 25 or above, Luo Ning, what is a magic warrior, when Yun asked with her Lolita voice. She, in contrast to her sister Wen Yen, had two ponytails, one on each side of her head. A magic warrior is. I don't know. Big brother told me that since my main stats are strength and magic then I'm a magic warrior. I see. So, the reason why you use a great sword is because it's more suitable for someone who uses brute force? Wen Yun. For some reason, I feel like you are offending me but I can't put my finger on where the problem lies in your words. It's your imagination, he he he. So, what's your second reason for choosing a great sword? Right, I almost forgot. Thanks for reminding me, Wen Yen. 
you're welcome. Then, the second reason why I chose this great sword as my main weapon? It is, of course, because Big Brother Bai also wields one. That second choice of yours is quite interesting. Wen Yun, is it my imagination, or are you making fun of me? The three little girls seemed to be in their own little world, casually chatting while the surroundings were littered with the blood and flesh of exploded or burned corpses. The little pink dolphin seemed to be really sick of listening to the girls talking all day but since she had no choice Xiao Xiao continued to do her job obediently. She really couldn't wait for Bai Zemin to come back to hug her after such a long time. Just as the little pink dolphin was thinking about such a thing while removing the bodies from the moat, her big pink eyes lit up and she hurriedly turned her little head to the side. Pooh! Whoa! When Yen subconsciously opened her arms and took several steps back as the dolphin in her embrace exerted a tiny bit of force to jump, successfully slipping and escaping her grasp. The three girls followed little Xiao Zhao's jumping trajectory with their eyes and froze when they saw the person who caught the little pink dolphin with ability. Big brother! Big brother bye! The three girls immediately rushed over when they saw Bai Zemin a little over a hundred meters ahead of them, forgetting the work they were doing. Bai Zemin chuckled as he saw the three little angels running towards him. Luo Ning was naturally countless times faster than the one twin sisters so she was the first to come and hug him directly. Not long after, the one twins also arrived. Wen Yen took the left side and Wen Yun took the right side as if they had both talked about it beforehand. In the past, the one twins were not especially close to Bai Zemin and the two of them were only relatively closer to Shang Guanbing Shui, Wu Yijuan, and Luo Ning. However, because the three aforementioned people spent a lot of time together with Bai Zemin, the Wen twins gradually began to get to know him and interact more with him. Due to Bai Zemin's personality, he did not take too long to win the fanaticism of the little twins to the point that Shang Guanbing Shui looked at him with weird eyes several times, which made Bai Zemin feel a little uncomfortable for several days. Poo, poo piu piu piu. Little Xiao 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 rubbed her soft little head against Bai Zemin's chest, it was as if she wanted to dig a hole in the armor and crawl in there forever. My dear Xiao Xiao, I've missed you too. Bai Zemin held the little pink dolphin with one hand and gave her a gentle kiss on her forehead, much to the little animal's delight. With his free hand, he patted each girl and stroked their hair alternately to make sure none of them felt left behind. Wen Yun, I see you changed your hairstyle and now we're your sisters? Big brother Bai, you really noticed the difference between the two of us. That's amazing. Mm. Only our parents could accurately identify who was who he he he. And you, Luo Ning, I see you've broken through to level 44 in such a short time. That's quite some advancement, in no time you'll be a powerful second order soul evolver. You're even likely to surpass me. He he he. I don't want to surpass big brother or else I won't be able to be the princess of China. Don't you want to be the queen better? Nope. Big brother shall be king and I shall be princess he he he. It was a quite strange or rather, peculiar sight. In the middle of the bloody battlefield, a grown man was hugging a small pink dolphin while chatting with three lolas and even saying a thing or two to the dolphin who in response made particularly pleasant sounds to the ear each time. Amidst the explosions caused by powerful physical attacks or terrifying magic skills flying around, four humans and a sea life seemed to be in their own world. However, because the number of enemies was few and absolutely manageable, no one said anything about the strange sights. Bai Zemin led the three little girls and the pink dolphin to the entrance of the base where he met Lu Xiao Yao. She looked at him with complicated eyes as memories of the past flashed in her mind, making her realize once again how colossal the distance was between the young man in front of her and herself even though the age difference was insignificant. Bai Zemin exchanged a few words with her and congratulated her on her good work as well as the growth of her character, which led her to become a wonderful woman that many talented young men had their eyes on. After a few words, he jumped to the top of the walls with the girls still clinging to him to meet Kong Lan and Fu Xiafeng, leaving Lu Xiaoyao behind without noticing the slight blush on her face at all. Lilith didn't know whether to laugh or cry as she watched Bai Zemin interacting with the others. That skill immovable heart is practically the opposite of stone heart. A few words and women are charmed by him, even little girls don't seem to be able to escape. She muttered to herself as she watched the three Lolas compete for the place to see who would take the most space on Bai Zemin's body. They're just little girls. Just little girls. Lilith began to chant under her breath as she saw what was taking place. Leader. Nan Gongyi approached Bai Zemin with slow steps. Bai Zemin looked him up and down, noticing that despite still being injured Kong Lan's healings were as masterful as ever. After a moment of silence, Bai Zemin looked him in the eyes and said in a clear and firm voice, Nan Gongyi. From today your position as a rank 3 noble will be revoked and in return, you will be given the title of rank 4 noble. Any complaints? 
Nan Gong Yi was naturally surprised that the first words to come out of Bai Zemin's mouth after not seeing him for about a month were those. However, he quickly calmed down and after thinking about it for a moment understood. No, no complaints. M. I don't want such things to happen again. Your younger sister Nan Gong Lingxin has left you far behind in all aspects but if you work hard maybe you can catch up. Bai Zemin nodded and seeing the resolve in Nan Gong Yi's eyes he felt satisfied. Since Nan Gong Yi understood why he was being verbally punished then there was no need to talk anymore. For people like them, losing a position was not too serious as it could be regained over time after putting in effort and gaining honors of some sort after contributing to the base. The reason Bai Zemin did what he did was to warn Nan Gong Yi that he was aware of his insubordination on the battlefield and that the next time would not be such a light punishment. Leader, if I may. Go ahead. Kong Lan looked at Bai Zemin and asked quietly about the zombies from before. She and the others had witnessed how the two-meter giant that was still behind by Zemin like a shadow drove away not only the second-order zombie but also moved large pieces of earth to carry away the other zombies. Now, by Zemin had returned but there was no trace of the zombies. How could such a thing not be strange? Everyone was curious and since among those present everyone was trustworthy Kong Lan had no qualms about asking. Ah, about that. By Zemin's words were suddenly cut off as his expression turned ugly. Is something wrong? Leader? Big Brother? Nan Gong Yi, Kong Lan, Fu Xiafeng, the One Twins, Luo Ning, and even little Xiao Xiao looked at Bai Zemin with concern as they noticed his sudden change in expression and mood. Something bad happened. Bai Zemin did not say too much. He linked a part of his soul to the Sky Destroyer's ring and soon several golden runes lit up. A few seconds later, Nan Gong Yi, Kong Lan, Fu Xiafeng, Lu Yan, and also Luo Ning abruptly raised their heads to the sky when they noticed the change in the atmosphere and the one twins did the same, subconsciously even though they didn't understand what was happening. They were the strongest at the moment so they were the first to notice it, however, the others were not slow to realize that something was happening either. But when all the soul evolvers and soldiers raised their heads to the sky, everyone's eyes widened as they saw the huge warship slowly approaching. Chapter 723, Sea of Goblins Due to the circumstances, Bai Zemin did not have time to explain too much about what was happening. After the Sky Destroyer battleship was at a relatively low altitude, he looked at Kong Jun with stern eyes and remarked, Kong Jun, you stay here. I need you to help me protect this fort for a couple of hours. One day at most. Bai Zemin did not know what might happen until the large amounts of mana that abounded in Earth's atmosphere were properly absorbed, therefore. He could not afford to get on the Sky Destroyer and leave while leaving behind his base and trusted subordinates, abandoning them to their fate. Only with a powerful existence like Kong Jun serving as protection would he feel more comfortable and at ease to leave in order to take care of other pressing matters. However, Kong Jun immediately took a step forward when he heard Bai Zemin's words. The Queen. Must protect. Bai Zemin's eyes widened for a moment. He had partially forgotten the matter of the egg that was in the command room where the new queen of the weaver ants was silently growing. The previous queen of the weaver ants, Sherlin, had ordered Kong Jun to follow and obey Bai Zemin as long as those orders did not put the future queen in danger in any way. Kong Jun, I can assure you that I will protect the queen myself. Bai Zemin assured, his voice calmer than before as he slowly said, with my true power coupled with the firepower and defense of the Sky Destroyer, the future queen will not experience any kind of misfortune. Besides, remember that she is my daughter now, my concern for her does not lose with your... That's not to mention the fact that inside the Sky Destroyer even you wouldn't be able to get close to the ship before probably being killed by the laser cannons. Kong Jun's head lowered for a few moments and after a few seconds, he raised it again. The weaver ant, still covered by the large dark cloak, nodded and said in a monotone voice, Okay. Bai Zemin sighed a sigh of relief in his heart when he heard the positive from Kong Jun. Kong Jun was an existence that was not completely under his control so while it was safe to say that Bai Zemin did not have to worry about things like betrayal or being tricked thanks to the effect of his lord subclass, it was not as if he could casually give orders to him since Kong Jun was his loyal follower with freedom of will, not a slave. The few around Bai Zemin were so shocked that they simply did not know how to react to what was going on. The strange, practically one-sided conversation they had just heard had even made them partially forget about the large warship hovering 400 meters above their heads. Future queen? Sky destroyer? Laser cannons? Daughter? It didn't matter if it was the adults or the little girls. Even the little pink dolphin was so confused that she had tilted her head while looking at Bizemon with curious eyes. Unfortunately for them, Bizemon had no time for explanations since the situation was pressing. Kong Lan, as you must well feel, Kong Jun is also my loyal follower. 
Baizemin pointed at the six-foot giant as he said in a deep voice, he will help you keep the fort under control, you take care of giving him some basic instructions when necessary. Kong Lan looked at Kong Jun silently before nodding with a serious expression on her face. Although she preferred to follow Baizemin to the battlefield he was probably heading to and help him, she understood that being here was the best way to serve him at this moment. Just as Baizemin was about to take a leap and walk away, three pairs of little hands grabbed tightly onto him and forced him to stop. He looked at the three little girls with confusion and said hurriedly, do you need anything? Why don't you wait until I come back? We can talk later then. Big brother, let us go with you. Big brother bye, we also want to go with little Xiao Xiao. Big brother bye, can we get on your big flying machine? I've never been on one that could fly. The voices of the three girls turned into a small chaos as the three began to talk hurriedly and at the same time as if fearing they would be left behind. Baizemin had no time to explain himself, and from the eyes of the three little girls it was clear that they were not going to give up so easily. Although he could simply push them away or scold them and they would surely obey, Baizemin was not willing to see or be the cause of these little angels' tears. Least of all considering how much these three girls had suffered in the past, especially true for the one twins. Good. He quickly nodded and commanded in a serious voice, hold on tight to me and don't let go. The three girls immediately obeyed. Even Luo Ning held on tightly even though she could jump into the sky herself using the strength of her legs. Bang! Bai Zemin didn't stick around to chat and with a mighty stomp, his body shot skyward. Even though he could feel the strong grip of Wen Yan and Wen Yun, he still made sure that the girls could not fall after surrounding them with a part of the protective mana cover that covered his body, something that all soul evolvers had regardless of race but had to learn how to use, and Bai Zemin was just learning. He heard the screams of the girls intermingled with their laughter as the wind carried all sounds away. Baizemin watched on his ascent as the white and purple lightning crackled mightily in the clouds of mana, but when his feet touched the top level of the sky destroyer, he immediately moved toward the teleportation circle. Upon entering the ship, Baizemin's body moved like lightning through the corridors and the vision of the three girls and the little pink dolphin in his embrace became blurred as he flashed at speeds. They could not comprehend. At the same time as he ran into the command room and silently controlled the sky destroyer in order for it to start moving in a southerly direction as it ascended into the sky, Bai Zemin said loudly and in a deep voice, Bing Shui, how is the current situation? Bai Zemin's voice confused the three little girls and little Xiao Xiao, however, after a few seconds of silence, Shang Guan Bing Shui's unmistakably beautiful voice could be heard from the walls of the battleship. It's somehow controllable, at least for now. Shang Guan Bing Shui's voice was cold and indifferent. Yells of soldiers giving orders, as well as explosions caused by all kinds of attacks, could be heard. Everyone was used to the sound of gunfire now, therefore, that characteristic sound that in the past was a sign of terror was now a relief to the humans. The louder the gunfire sounded meant that the defense was also strong and the battle was not yet lost. Baizemin sharpened his hearing and heard the peculiar sound of something rumbling in the distance so he hurriedly asked, Did you move the combat helicopters? A few seconds later, Shang Guan Bing Shui's reply came. I had no choice, even the battle tanks were mobilized. When the mana began to congregate on one side, that strange green egg-shaped cave appeared and the goblins began to come out one after another. Even though we have killed countless so far the number of goblins only continues to increase. Have you tried to destroy that thing that appeared on the battlefield? Of course, I have tried. More than a hundred missiles were fired by the military assault helicopters, Uncle Wu even mobilized several red arrows apart from the war tanks but nothing did any good. What about you? Haven't you tried? No, I did try. Shang Guan Bing Shui's voice sounded again inside the warship. She was silent for a moment before saying in a somber voice, but, my destructive power is not high. That's why I had no choice but to contact you even though I knew you were taking care of business in the north. Bai Zemin stayed silent, and after he arrived in the command room and sat in the seat of the ship's captain, no one interrupted him. Everyone inside the Sky Destroyer was somehow aware of what was going on now thanks to his conversation with Shang Guan Bing Shui. One of the functions of the Sky Destroyer was the amplification and improvement of radio waves so that any such equipment that was connected and recorded in the ship's supercomputer data could communicate perfectly with the ship's captain. Precisely thanks to this wonderful function, Shang Guan Bing Shui and Bai Zemin could communicate despite the great distance between them. In fact, the communication would be much better if not for the fierce mana waves interrupting at every moment due to the Earth's evolution process. Bai Zemin was thinking carefully as the Sky Destroyer moved at speeds that surpassed the sound barrier of the current Earth. All sounds in his surroundings seemed to have disappeared as he analyzed the situation. Shang Guan Bing Shui was stronger than Bai Zemin in any of the basic stats. 
After all her soul power was not only far higher, but even though it was more impure than his it didn't mean that it wasn't tremendously pure. However, even though she had higher stats, the combat style of Shang Guan Bing Shui was more reserved. The skills Shang Guan Bing Shui had, despite being powerful, were intended for long fights and crowd control. However, the skills by Zemin had were intended to finish all fights in the shortest amount of time possible, his skills were as damaging to his enemies as they were to himself and his allies. When it came to real power, destruction, large-scale massacre capability, Bai Zemin was the unrivaled king. No matter how powerful Shang Guan Bing Shui was, she probably wouldn't be able to match the destructive power of Bai Zemin at 100% even after she became a third order or even a fourth order. After a long time of silence, Bai Zemin finally opened his mouth and said in a calm voice, Bing Shui, even though we need to study what that thing is better first, just in case prepare the same thing you prepared back then when we entered the fifth ruin. Even though I really want to say don't use that thing here, there might not be any other choice depending on whether we can finish off these goblins. However, unless we have an army of soul evolvers it will be hard. By Zemin, we might have to use the golems of the Sky Destroyer. See you in half an hour. Okay. The communication was cut off after Bai Zemin and Shang Guan Bing Shui said what they had to say. Bai Zemin ignored the eyes he felt on him and closed his eyes as he leaned back in the leather chair. If the worst came to the worst, then he would simply use Crimson Blood Judgment and destroy everything. The problem with this simple but effective tactic was that Bai Zemin could not fully control the destructive power of his skill let alone keep his allies from getting involved. Fortunately, this was where Shang Guan Bing Shui came in. With her, Bai Zemin only had to worry about not dying himself as she would prevent his Crimson Blood Judgment from being a cause of annihilation, even for the allied faction. Bai Zemin also did not want to mobilize the army of golems he had obtained when he gained control over Sky Destroyer. Those golems were a secret card that he preferred to keep hidden until times of need since the loss of just one golem would be painful for him. Bai Zemin wanted to send some to be studied and see if in the near future more could be built. Again, lucky for him and Bai Zemin had a backup plan to not have to use the golems. Chinese Renaissance Faction Base These things really don't stop coming out. A soldier shouted as he switched magazines before continuing to fire into the distance. Look on the bright side. Another fellow soldier shouted as he gritted his teeth and clutched his heavy machine gun tightly, fighting against the powerful vibration transmitted to his body from his arms. Bright side? How is there a bright side in all this? Another soldier laughed out loud as he fired with bloodshot eyes. His shoulder was aching from the powerful recoil of his sniper rifle after firing it relentlessly for the past two hours. At least we don't have to aim. The soldier from earlier shouted in reply. He seemed to be laughing as he spoke, but the trembling in his voice was a result of the vibrations from the heavy machine gun stationed on the walls, shoot where we shoot we will definitely hit one. Not only in front of them but all around the entire base, no matter where they looked, a sea of green enemies were running towards them with fierce expressions or laughing. Their long noses, small green bodies, sharp fangs, bulging eyes, and pointed ears, were characteristics that revealed they were goblins. These goblins were small and most were completely naked with a weird transparent liquid running down their bodies. Some had some cover but these were the medium-sized ones and their numbers were fewer in comparison. However, the most terrifying were the adult goblins who wore leather skins as armor and used bones of mutated beasts as their weapons. In the distance, who knew how many kilometers from the base, an object of a size that could only be categorized as a giant loomed into the clouds. It was green in color with small purple spots and lines around it, as well as a strange liquid staining the surroundings. Ten combat helicopters were flying in the skies and one of them occasionally fired missiles at the giant object only to be met with an insignificant and easily ignored explosion. It was precisely from that place where the goblins were coming out endlessly. Chapter 724 A Fierce War Against Endless A Fierce War Against Endless The sole evolvers of the Chinese Renaissance faction were facing the goblins. Because the number of enemies was simply too high, the soldiers and soul evolvers of the human side had no choice but to split into four teams, north, east, south, and west. Each team was in charge of protecting a part of the wall. The survivors had locked themselves in their homes, terrified at the mere thought of going out. The war was not only being raged on the outside of the base as occasionally there were one or two flying mutant beasts that flew out of control as if they were nervous or angry about something, attacking the first thing that came into their sight ranges. The sound of gunfire coming from the four cardinal directions mingled with the explosions resulting from the powerful 125mm cannons of the war tanks and the fierce heavy machine guns mounted on the armored vehicles. The number of bullets of all calibers that were expended per minute was simply colossal, to say the least. 
Were it not for the fact that Wu Qiqian enjoyed an advantage at the beginning of the apocalypse thanks to his official title as an important member of the Chinese government and a member of the Wu family, which gave him the enormous possibility of acquiring and gaining control over more than five military camps hidden at key points throughout the Chongping district, the Chinese Renaissance faction's reserves would have already been drained. In fact, the ammunition stock was plummeting at the speed of light. This was because the soldiers had practically never stopped firing except when the barrels of their guns overheated and they needed to stop to avoid damaging the weapon and to avoid getting hurt in case of a malfunction. Lin Min was the general in charge of the South Gate Army. He had reached his position because he had real talent, unlike the majority who used family connections. Besides, Lin Min was a rough and tough person who did not accept any kind of bribe so he was not particularly liked by the higher echelons and were it not for the fact that Wu Qiqian had kept him. Under his wing, he might have been one of the many corpses that occasionally appeared in a ditch in the poorer streets of the base. As Lin Min surveyed the surroundings, it didn't take him long to notice that the goblin wave was still pressing harder and harder despite the fact that his men were doing their best. The soldiers were gritting their teeth and their eyes had turned blood red from killing goblins. Their shoulders ached from the constant recoil of their weapons and some even had bleeding hands from clinging so tightly to the metal of the firearms. Finally, Lin Min couldn't help but look at the person standing next to him and said in a respectful but deep voice, young lady, I'm afraid you will have to move after all. Although Lin Min hoped that he would not have to ask this person for help since he had some hatred towards soul evolvers after his wife was raped and killed by one, he was an intelligent person who knew when to move forward and backward. In this kind of circumstance, Lin Min was clear that allowing the goblins to approach the walls would be a fatal mistake, because if they used their numbers, they could easily build bridges of corpses to reach the top of the walls. M. The person nodded and made a small sound with her throat before stepping forward. She said nothing and with a graceful but powerful leap soared over 200 meters in an instant before she began to fall from the high walls of the base. Golden bullets flew everywhere, and some were even headed for her as the soldiers on the walls did not expect the sudden movement of an ally. However, to everyone's good fortune, this beautiful woman was not just an ordinary soul evolver, this was further proven when the bullets melted as they came too close to her body. A faint but powerful layer of crimson flames surrounded Feng Tianwu's body. She narrowed her eyes a glint of coldness flashed in them as she focused on the countless goblins below and getting closer and closer due to her falling in process. Goblins were lustful creatures by nature, and when they saw a human beauty falling from the sky towards them, there was a large portion that stopped. These creatures that seemed to have been born minutes ago at most laughed and used their long tongues to lick themselves as a certain uncovered part of their bodies reacted to the ever-approaching fire fairy. The coldness in Feng Tianwu's eyes turned into anger when she noticed the lust of the filthy creatures. She whirled in the sky like a goddess and waved her hands as her melodious voice mingled with the fierce roars and lewd laughter of the goblins. Animal Fire Kingdom. Her words had only fallen when the dark sky immediately lit up. Dozens of magic circles turned into hundreds, and hundreds of them soon became thousands. The temperature of all the surroundings increased to the point that the goblins began to get the feeling that something wasn't right. The creatures put aside all lust and began to throw stones or even at the companions next to them with the intention of speeding up the fall or killing the human woman, however, all the objects turned into molten lava after getting too close to her. Finally, by the time Feng Tianwu's feet touched solid ground again, a large patch of land formerly occupied by goblins was completely empty. There were no corpses, only a few small glowing rocks that were the only proof that there had been living beings standing there until recently before being incinerated to dust. A dozen or so taller goblins that were clearly at least several days or weeks old immediately snapped out of their days. The creatures' faces contorted in anger and with a bizarre shriek, they charged forward, being quickly followed by the smaller goblins who also let out high-pitched shrieks of their own. Feng Tianwu snorted coldly. She raised a hand skyward before lowering it. The now over 10,000 small magic circles immediately glowed and the magic skill instantly triggered. All kinds of firebirds suddenly burst out from inside the magic circles, flying swiftly towards the horde of goblins. There were crows, normal birds, eagles, hawks, parrots, doves, etc. The firebirds cut the wind in two and began to mingle among the goblins. Standing in the same place, Feng Tianwu moved her hands like an orchestra conductress and elegantly mobilized the army of firebirds. On the walls, Lin Min could not help but be amazed, as well as the other soldiers who for a moment forgot to continue firing goddess. So beautiful. What an amazing woman. All kinds of praises were sung towards her. The current Feng Tianwu was like a crimson goddess, surrounded by scarlet flames. 
She seemed to be dancing on the battlefield, every movement of her waist and hands was the undoing of her enemies. The goblins barely had time to scream in pain before their chests were pierced by the firebirds, and the luckiest of them simply had their heads turned to ashes in an instant so they didn't even know what happened when they fell lifeless to the ground. Approximately twenty minutes later, the terrifying goblin sea that was overwhelming the south gate of the base had been reduced so much that even with the high speed at which they were appearing was not enough to replenish the numbers lost. Lin Min sighed in relief that now the side of the base would at least have two or three more hours before the goblins could replenish themselves and get to where they were before. Although the soul evolvers on the human side were fighting fiercely on the ground, it was simply impossible for them to stop a sea of enemies that appeared too fast and gave them no time to build traps or obstacles that would buy them some time. However, Feng Tianwu did not stop there. Her face was slightly pale due to the high consumption of mana. But when her honey-colored eyes with a slight reddish tinge landed on the combat helicopter several kilometers distance away, a glint of competitiveness flashed in them. She whistled skyward and jumped high, a moment later, a huge fire eagle over three meters high passed below and picked her up. These summoned fire creatures had basic intelligence so they could understand simple commands. Feng Tianwu waved a hand and the fire eagle moved deeper into the sea of goblins. As her magic robe clung tightly onto her curvaceous body due to the strong wind pressure she faced, Feng Tianwu took with her the now little more than 4,500 firebirds she had left, lighting up the sky and wreaking even more devastation on the enemy troops. Because of the brave feat, as well as her phenomenal performance with her beautiful but fierce red flames, Feng Tianwu would later be known as Crimson Witch. This would be a title that would belong only to her, and that at some point in history, would arouse terror in her enemies just by hearing it. At the West Gate, the mobilization of Feng Hong was also called for because the goblin approach was simply unstoppable despite the human firepower and the union of over 800 soul evolvers that were simply insignificant compared to the sea of enemies that surrounded them. The man was not very different from his daughter as when he stepped onto the battlefield he didn't bother to hold back. The tornadoes of fire whistled noisily and under the control of the Second Order's powerful existence. Thousands of goblins began to disappear rapidly turning into mortal debris that was blown somewhere by the strong winds that only served to boost the power of the flames even more. At the north gate, Sun Jun was fiercely fighting alongside his brother-in-law Wu Keqian. Although Sun Jun and Wu Keqian were powerful second-order existences in their own right, they were both warriors who specialized mainly in stats like strength, stamina, and perhaps agility. Unlike the destructive power and control that a mage had on the battlefield, Warriors were simply less flashy which was why while the two of them were doing a phenomenal job at keeping the enemy at bay, they simply had no way to compare to Feng Tianwu and Feng Hong. Fortunately, however, half of the powerful team that had participated in the Five Silver Pagodas expedition had been stationed in the north, with approximately 100 First Order existences whose sole power was particularly pure. The unclassified goblins were experiencing what was an impossible wall to break through despite their practically infinite numbers, even the First Order goblins were being torn apart with ease. At the East Gate, Sun Ling and Wei Juan were the most powerful existences in the area and were also the commanders in charge of protecting this part of the base, as well as not allowing the goblins to approach the walls. Although Sun Ling and Wei Juan were not Second Order existences, both women were talented and powerful. Wui Juan had thrown countless seeds everywhere and at this point she had raised her own forest from the ground. Everything within a range of approximately 3,000 meters was surrounded by vines of all kinds, and all the goblins within that area were being eaten alive by the countless flesh-eating plants there. However, even though 3,000 meters sounded like a lot, the size of the eastern area of the base was simply too large, after all, around 300,000 people lived behind the walls they were protecting. Sun Ling was like a shadow flashing across the battlefield, appearing and disappearing. Her two sharp daggers reaped the lives of countless enemies at lightning speed and the strange golden pheromones that emanated from her and surrounded her alluring body turned the already lustful goblins into creatures that could simply stand there, panting in rabid gasps as they stared stupidly at her, making it easy for Sun Ling to hunt them down. Ironically and despite the East Gate having the lowest number of soul evolvers, it was also next to the South Gate the one closest to the goblin nest, the place that could be considered relatively safe. This was because apart from people like Wui Juan and Sun Ling, a troop of 10,000 soldiers fully armed with electromagnetic rifles had been stationed there. A single shot from each electromagnetic rifle was enough to claim the lives of five or six goblins in a straight line before losing its power. Several kilometers away from the south gate, inside one of the combat helicopters, Shang Guan Bing Shui was sitting in the back seat as she watched the situation below through the window. 
She was frowning slightly as she watched the sea of green rushing towards the base when a large flash of crimson light attracted her attention. Turning her face slightly, Shang Guanbing Shua narrowed her eyes and a flash of surprise shone in her sky blue irises as she saw Feng Tianwu incinerating hundreds plus hundreds of thousands of goblins. By herself, Lady Shang Guan, should I get a little closer? Hearing the pilots shout almost completely suppressed by the sound of the helicopter's rotor blades, Shang Guanbing Shui gave Feng Tianwu one last glance before moving her eyes to her left. There, that huge egg that seemed to be a living cave was pulsing. Goblins were still coming out of the not-so-small hole in the front. Shang Guanbing Shui did not know how this giant thing appeared there. All she and the others knew was that it definitely had to do with the large amount of mana surrounding the area as it was too obvious that the giant egg was using the world's mana to generate goblins. To exhaustion. Suddenly, however, Shang Guanbing Shui's pupils trembled as she saw a strange object coming out from inside the cave. She hurriedly slapped the pilot's seat several times and commanded in an anxious voice. Move back. Quickly retreat. Chapter 725 Goblin Battleship The combat helicopter pilot had no idea what was going on, after all, his eyes were not as good as those of a soul evolver, let alone compared to the eyes of a soul evolver of such a high level and whose soul power was as pure as was the case with Shang Guanbing Shui. However, none of that mattered to the man. Hearing the anxiety in the voice of the beautiful woman sitting behind him and whom he dared not even look at for fear of being spellbound, the pilot immediately pulled the cyclic control back and to the right. Shang Guanbing Shui continued to look left and back as the helicopter flew away from the giant egg. She pulled out a military radio from her bag and ordered in a serious and urgent voice, to all Falcon units, leave the area immediately. Her words had just been sent when the movements in the sky immediately changed. The combat helicopters that circled the area and occasionally launched missiles stopped moving in circles and immediately retreated, returning to the vicinity of the base as ordered. Shang Guanbing Shui sighed in relief as she saw that all the helicopters were able to move away safely. Although the goblins on the ground were launching attacks using bone arrows and stones, the combat helicopters had been modified and the shell was reinforced by the scales of a second-order mutant snake that Wu Qiqian and Sun Jun had defeated in the past. Child, did something happen? Wu Qiqian's voice was transmitted from the military radio. Shang Guanbing Shui first made sure that there would be no immediate trouble and while carefully watching that increasingly large object, coming out from inside the egg she replied in a cold voice, Uncle Wu, you arrange for the metallic fleet to retreat back to the base please. These goblins are not as simple as we expected. After a few moments of silence, one of the many small green lights on the military radio in Shang Guanbing Shui's hands came back on and Wu Qiqian's serious voice rang out again. I saw the helicopters pulling back, that's why I contacted you. Could you explain a little about the situation on your side? Shang Guanbing Shui opened her mouth and was about to say something back when her expression changed slightly. She hurriedly pointed outside the window and said loudly, Ice shield. Followed by the appearance of a deep blue round shield approximately 50 meters in diameter on the back of one of the retreating combat helicopters, an explosion broke out noisily almost from ground level. The ferocious thunder was so sudden that none of the pilots had time to react, and when they realized it, they had no time to make any kind of evasive maneuver. Boom! The ice shield exploded into thousands of small fragments that rained down from the sky like sparkling diamonds, being scattered everywhere by the strong winds. The helicopter that had been the target of the attack flew out of the pilot's control as the shockwave sent it spinning through the sky. Bing Shui? Bing Shui? What was that? Most of the green lights on Shang Guan Bing Shui's military radio came on as the anxious voices of the various generals and commanders in charge of each group began to ask what had happened. The explosion had been powerful enough to be heard even from the base. The expression on Shang Guan Bing Shui's face was as cold as ice as she watched the large flying object soaring into the sky after emerging from inside the egg. She pressed the privilege button to speak, and after a moment of silence she said in an indifferent voice, the goblins seemed to have a zeppelin with them. Zeppelin? Zeppelin? Like those giant air globes? Shang Guanbing Shui ignored everyone's words, and after making sure that the pilot of the affected combat helicopter managed to take control of the helicopter, she refocused her sky-colored eyes on the giant bomb-shaped object. The goblin Zeppelin, like all the other Zeppelins, was oval-shaped like a nuclear bomb of colossal size. Approximately 400 meters long and with its earth color, the Zeppelin looked like a small world captured in the coil of the sky. Its speed was nothing out of this world, around the same speed at which combat helicopters moved, however, what was really terrifying were the two cannons on either side of the flying ship. The only thing that gave Shang Guanbing Shui some relief was the fact that the airship did not seem to have such great firepower. 
even when she looked at the cannons on the sides of the flying object, she only felt a slight tinge of threat but nothing comparable to the cannons of the Sky Destroyer they had encountered and taken possession of recently. They look like cannons like those used in the Middle Ages, but judging from the blast force from before they are definitely powerful weapons. Shang Guanbing Shui noted. She narrowed her eyes and a dangerous glint shone in them as she noticed the figure standing on top of the goblin zeppelin. As if feeling its eyes, the goblin standing on top of the zeppelin focused on the combat helicopter Shang Guanbing Shui was riding in and a fierce grin appeared on his face. The creature definitely had intelligence, and not at an average level. Shang Guanbing Shui saw the creature raise a white bone with lightning flashing around it and she quickly stood up. She opened the sliding door of the helicopter and the wind immediately caused her silver-white hair to wave wildly. Lady Shang Guan? The pilot shouted in surprise as he looked over his shoulder. You keep moving. She shouted loudly. After pressing a button on the military radio, Shang Guan Bing Shui shouted another order, Chen He, try to shoot down that zeppelin. She received no reply, however, two or three seconds later, a howling whistle followed by an explosion drew her eyes to the east. From there, a bright flash of blazing red light illuminated the sky with great power directly in the direction of the goblin zeppelin in the distance. Shang Guan Bing Shui kept her eyes fixed on the goblin zeppelin, more specifically, on the intelligent goblin standing on top of it. The goblin snorted and clutched at the white bone with both hands while pointing at the fire arrow flying towards the zeppelin. Then, the white bone glowed and golden lightning immediately seemed to merge into the weapon. Boom! A mighty blast thundered in from the bone in the goblin's hand, a great golden lightning flash shot at full speed straight towards the arrow in mid-flight. Boom! As the flaming red light and the golden light met, a mighty explosion shook the skies and illuminated the surroundings a few thousand meters out. The clouds of mana in the sky churned fiercely and several less powerful, but equally dangerous explosions echoed everywhere in the vicinity as the mana ignited using the remaining magic power from the two attacks. The goblin snorted again and a sardonic grin appeared on his face. He turned to look at the human female who was clearly capable of more powerful attacks than the one he had just stopped. But when his eyes landed on the distant combat helicopter, the goblin's pupils trembled. Shang Guanbing Shui was no longer there. The goblin quickly raised his bone and began to charge a new attack. His eyes now rested on the thin but long path of ice that rose from the ground like a staircase and bent 90 degrees directly pointing towards the zeppelin. Bing Shui, what's the deal with that goblin? Chen He's voice came from the military radio but Shang Guan Bing Shui was too busy to even take it out of her leather bag. She focused her eyes completely on the goblin and the zeppelin, and as she burst out with agility that not even by Zemin would be able to match unless he used overlap regeneration, the distance quickly began to grow closer. When Shang Guan Bing Shui noticed that the power of the bone in the goblin's hands was about to explode, she pointed toward the sky and activated Ice Maker. Ice Apocalypse the image of thousands of ice meteors raining down from space flashed in Shang Guan Bing Shui's mind, and at the same time as such a thing happened, her will was transmitted by her magic power into the rune of her skill. Thousands of meteors over 20 meters in diameter each condensed as the air froze, and when Shang Guan Bing Shui lowered her hand, the meteors began to fall down, most of them completely covering the goblin zeppelin. A terrifying roar came from the goblin's mouth and as he reaffirmed his stance he released another powerful golden flash straight into the sky instead of firing it at Shang Guan Bing Shui as he had planned. Boom! The first ice meteor was destroyed in an instant and a second and third explosions followed. The goblin forcefully moved the bone and as if it was a kind of laser beam the powerful golden lightning moved according to the movement of the bone, tracing a bright golden line that joined the clouds and the zeppelin. Boom! 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 Boom, boom, the ice meteorites were shattered by the powerful golden beam, and although the war on the ground was still as bloody as before, the powerful golden light was a great wake-up call for the humans who briefly froze in fear at the thought of receiving such an attack. The walls of the base would be destroyed in moments. At the same time, the cannons of the goblin zeppelin seemed to be activated from inside the flying ship as they immediately began firing at Shang Guan Bing Shui. The explosions from the cannons made it clear to Shang Guan Bing Shui that even she would not survive a direct hit from those, therefore, she unhesitatingly activated one of her movement skills before the ice road she was using as support was shattered. Sonic speed. Boom. Shang Guan Bing Shui disappeared from her position in a split second and several mock cones appeared in her trajectory. Boom. 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 The ice road was immediately shattered by the explosions. But even though the goblin in the zeppelin had managed to repel all the attacks, his expression was ugly. This was because he had completely lost sight of the human female. 
Suddenly, a shiver ran through the goblin's bones, and without hesitation, he slashed backward with his white bone. Boom! Followed by a powerful explosion, the shockwave pushed the goblin several steps backward as he cautiously looked forward. Unlike the goblins on the ground, this goblin clearly had enough intelligence to put aside his lust even in the face of a woman as beautiful as the one in front of him. Shang Guanbing Shua frowned slightly as her attack failed. She thought she would be able to kill the goblin with a single slash, but she made a slight miscalculation. She hadn't counted on the fact that this creature would already be in the third order. Shang Guanbing Shue took advantage of the goblin's wariness in front of her to observe her body, and noticing the flashes of golden lightning intermittently flickering over her form, she was a little surprised to feel her muscles go slightly numb. However, this was nothing to her. Her body became a blur and in an instant she reached the goblin, slashing with her sword straight for the neck. The goblin was clearly not as powerful as Shang Guanbing Shue in terms of stats, but his weapon granted him some advantage due to the range and its destructive power. Die! The goblin roared and swung fiercely downward with the intention of destroying the human woman and not caring about the zeppelin that was already shaking in the sky due to the previous attack. Shang Guanbing Shue's eyes flashed strangely as she noticed that this goblin somehow had a similar combat style to Bai Zemin when it came to crushing with strength and heavy weapons. However, this creature can't compare to him in any aspect. Shang Guanbing Shue's lips curved upwards. Boom! The white bone struck hard on the zeppelin and immediately a hole appeared allowing one to see inside from the outside. The ship sank and slowly began to fall from the sky as the screams of the goblins inside made it clear that the matter was urgent. However, the Third Order goblin had no time to worry about this as after crushing the human female in front of him, all he got was a flash of blue lightning bursting into tiny sparks before vanishing. The goblin felt a slight pain in his head but could not comprehend what happened as the light in his eyes immediately dimmed before fading completely. From his forehead, the tip of Shang Guanbing Shue's sword was visible piercing all the way through his head from back to front. She calmly withdrew her sword and the body of the goblin that was easily several inches taller than her fell to its knees before collapsing on the roof of the falling zeppelin. Shang Guanbing Shue noticed the smoke billowing from the hole caused by the third order goblin and it didn't take her long to realize that a part of the engine had probably been damaged. She knew nothing about Zeppelin's control or mechanics and she was pressed for time, therefore, after some thought, she activated the ice maker. The ice began to spread across the ship with her feet as the center and in a matter of seconds, the entire Zeppelin had turned into a huge ball of ice. The goblins inside froze to death and the weight increase, as well as the loss of all control, caused the ship to start plummeting straight down into the sea of goblins. Shang Guanbing Shue picked up the third order goblin corpse and the white bone, but just as she was about to make a leap to retreat, her pupils contracted to the size of a needle as her eyes landed on the giant egg again. Thank the gods and I contacted that man beforehand. She rejoiced in her heart at the sight of dozens of zeppelins emerging from the cave, all of them with a goblin standing on top. Chapter 726 War of a Magnitude Never Seen Before, Fighting with Courage On the ground, magic skill after magic skill was activated, lightning arrows, earth pikes, fireballs, ice cones, wind blades, summoned beasts, poison clouds. The sole evolvers of the human side who focused on magic and mana as their main stats stood on the high walls of the base and used each of their skills with practically zero rest as they could not afford. It, every time a skill with a predetermined cooldown time became usable again, it was immediately cast even if it was to end the life of just one more enemy. The cold flash of the swords glittered on the lugubrious battlefield. The corpses of the mutated goblins piled up to form mountains even though individually they were small and occasionally there was some red blood mixed with the green blood of the creatures, forming small puddles that in a matter of seconds joined with several more to form pools of blood, pools of blood that in a matter of another few seconds joined with several more to form lakes, and those lakes soon converged to form rivers. Although the humans fighting against the seemingly endless sea of goblins were unquestionably fewer to the point that the difference was simply incalculable, 80% of the goblins that charged towards the base were goblins that had just been born recently, and forget about carrying weapons, they did not even have any hides to cover their naked bodies. These newborn goblins were between level 5 and level 10, so weak that a single attack from a soul evolver of level 15 or higher could take out several at the same time. If a first order existence attacked an area, then at least all goblins within a 50 to 100 meter perimeter would be wiped out. As for the attacks of powerful second order soul evolvers. Boom! The earth shook fiercely when Zhong De's giant mace turned the body of a first order goblin into flesh paste before smashing the ground in front of him. 
Cracks of great size and thickness spread out with the point of impact as the center and the 500-meter diameter crater began to spread wider and wider. Goblins shrieked and cried as they fell into the cracks before being crushed by those falling behind them. The more fortunate ones simply turned into blood mist as the shockwave that extended over 700 meters reached them. Zhongda took a deep breath and as he raised his mace towards the sky, he roared mightily, Follow me. Fight. Fight. Kill. Kill. The group composed of approximately 200 soul evolvers roared like a single machine and without hesitation followed in Zhongda's footsteps, moving deeper and deeper into the sea of goblins. The eyes of the warriors were bloodshot, none of them could be bothered with things like elegance and they simply slashed with their swords or stabbed with their spears in all directions. At the end of the day and regardless of where they decided to aim, a goblin at the very least would definitely be hit as not even five seconds had passed since they entered the wave of enemies before. They were surrounded. Zhongda was like a meat grinder. Every time he swung his heavy two-handed mace and even before the true blow struck. The bodies of the goblins that crossed his path would blast out into blood mist after being smashed by the powerful air cannons that were generated by the pressure resulting from the weight of the weapon and Zhong does monstrous strength. However, there were also powerhouses among the goblins. Boom! Zhong does eyes suddenly widened as a goblin different from the rest managed to parry his attack. Being cut off guard, Zhong de had no choice but to take several steps back. Each step he took was so heavy that his footprints were firmly imprinted on the ground. The goblin that had tried to use the other goblins as cover and attack the human unawares was also forced back. The eyes of the creature widened with a tinge of surprise, and as he looked at the human male he couldn't help but praise in a hoarse voice, Human, you're strong. Not bad. The expressions on the faces of the human group following Zhong de closely turned ugly as their seemingly unstoppable charge was halted. With their steps now stagnant, the group was forced to press even further into the small territory they held as they slaughtered the goblins that hopped towards them with fierce grins on their ugly faces, trying to suffer as few injuries as possible and avoid death. Zhongda looked over his shoulder and figured that at this rate, they would all be exhausted to death. Therefore, after a deep breath, he gave the second order goblin in front of him a cruel glare. Fortunately, the level difference was not something he could not deal with thanks to his very pure soul power. Approximately 6 feet 6 inches or 6 feet 7 inches tall, leather armor, scaled helmet, and what appeared to be the femur of some sort of mutated beast. The second order goblin had a peculiar appearance but one that radiated strength from his muscles and the vicious flash in his bright yellow eyes made it clear that he was not one to mess with. Under normal circumstances, Zhongda would need a few minutes to deal with this kind of enemy, but if he was willing to pay the price things might be different. A wild glint flashed in his eyes as he stomped the ground beneath his feet, and by the time the cracks began to widen, Zhongda had already turned into a brown flash charging straight at the goblin that was as big as him. The second order goblin was no slouch either and when Zhongda charged forward, he did the same, turning into a flash of bright green light. Beast strength, double weight. Both Zhongda and the second order goblin activated their respective skills before swinging their weapons straight ahead. However, the eyes of the second order goblin widened in shock as he realized that he had made a mistake. The second order goblin believed that his fearless on the battlefield was big enough, but it was clear that the human he was up against today was even crazier. Die! Zhongda's eyes were like those of a beast and the roar that came out of his mouth sounded more like an animal howl than words said by a human being. He changed his hand movement at the last moment, and using all the strength of his wrist swung his mace straight towards the goblin's head in front of him ignoring the giant bone that in an instant would hit his left side. Bang! The head of the second order goblin exploded in the same way a watermelon would explode if someone threw it from the tenth floor of a building. Even at the moment of his death, the creature couldn't believe that he would meet such a lunatic. However, even though the second order goblin had died, the movement already made did not slow down at all. Boom! Zhongda's body was struck full on by the white bone, and at the same time as he spat out a mouthful of fresh blood, he was sent flying like a kite whose string had been cut. Bang, 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 bang. All the unclassified goblins in the trajectory in which Zhongda's body flew exploded into hundreds of pieces and their broken limbs flew everywhere. Team leader, team leader, quickly, help team leader Zhong. Those being led by Zhongda went into a frenzy at the sight of the person who had saved their lives on several occasions for as long as this war had started being sent flying, life or death unknown. Despite the rush of the human soul evolvers, the pressure of thousands upon thousands of enemies simply rushing towards them willing to exchange their lives for at least a bloody scratch was simply too heavy, therefore, it would still take at least a few seconds for them to reach the place where Zhongda's body had fallen. But the problem was that by that time, 
Jonda's body would have already been eaten by the goblins surrounding the entire area. It was just as everyone despaired that a fierce roar thundered from the midst of the sea of goblins. Get the fuck off. Boom. A powerful explosion wiped everything a few hundred meters around and the goblins turned into a bloody mist that quickly gathered in the sky after merging with the even bigger blood cloud floating on the battlefield. Team leader. Team leader Zhong. Ha 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 ha. He didn't die after all. The now 192 soul evolvers practically burst into tears of joy when they saw Zhong De standing a few hundred meters ahead of them. Zhong De's body was a complete mess. His plate armor had completely broken off on the left side and several not-so-small cracks had spread all over the armor's body. He could feel that he had at least two or three ribs practically pulverized and his internal organs had been damaged at a medium level at the very least. However, the smile on the young warrior's blood-covered face revealed that he was very satisfied with this kind of result. In fact, Zhong De laughed out loud and shouted ignoring the pain, Ha 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 ha. Big brother bye, I, Zhong De, owe you another life from now on. Only Zhong De understood his joy and the meaning of his words. The fact that he had survived that attack was not due to his own pure power. It was all thanks to the boost that all of his stats had received when the power of his loyal follower subclass came into play after his life was in mortal danger. Zhong De gritted his teeth and as he ran towards his group, making a bloody path as he swung his mace in wide arcs that only aggravated his condition even more, he roared again, brothers, sisters. Let's kill all these foul goblins until not a single one of them is left. Kill. 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 The eyes of everyone were fierce and no one said anything about retreating even though they had all suffered wounds of varying magnitudes. No one thought about stepping back, because behind them were their homes, their families, the small space of land they wanted to protect. Actually, this kind of scene was not only happening in the battlefield led by Zhongda. Nan Gonglingxin, Wu Keqian, Sun Jun, Feng Hong, Feng Tianwu, Liang Jing, Tinghua, Xingyun, Qin He. All second order existences led troops into the sea of goblins and risked their lives while fighting against millions. Many of them had already faced one or more second order goblins and had suffered in one way or another to finish the fight as fast as possible because they lacked time, not what they had to spare. A fleet consisting of 139 battle tanks, 321 IFEs, 953 military vehicles with mounted machine guns, and approximately 300 bulldozers split into four groups and charged into the Sea of Goblins under the protection of 2,000 armed men carrying electromagnetic rifles that had been brought from the ruins. The humans were giving their all in this war of a magnitude never before seen by anyone present. They had no choice but to give their all. This was because it had been approximately 20 minutes since the fleet of goblin zeppelins had appeared. The goblin zeppelins were the terror that forced the humans to leave the defense and jump into the attack in search of an end that was not yet in sight. Indeed, the battle on the ground was fierce. But the battle in the sky was several times worse. Amidst the clouds of mana and furious lightning, accompanied only by ten combat helicopters, a single beautiful woman of only 22 years of age was bravely and decisively facing the air forces and the strongest troops of the enemy faction. Chapter 727 Despair in the Skies After Shangguan Bingxue took the life of the Third Order Goblin and shot down the Zeppelin, she was immediately forced to engage the Goblin aircraft fleet with no time to rest at all. Explosions came and went, and the skies constantly lit up due to the activation of different magical skills or as a result of the clash between two powerful physical attacks. The magic cannons located on the sides of the large zeppelins fired with barely any intervals in between, causing powerful booms that rumbled through the dense clouds of mana where white lightning flashed with great power, enough to turn a first-order existence into ashes in a matter of seconds. After 20 minutes of fighting with practically zero second rest, even Shangguan Bing Shui began to experience problems. If this battle was taking place on the ground then things might be different, however, in the sky where there was no place to run it was already a miracle that a second order existence was still alive after facing dozens of second or third order existences, as well as the fierce magic cannons capable of threatening the lives of peak second order existences with ease. Boom! Ice Shield! The explosion of one of the magic cannons on the zeppelin closest to her boomed practically at the same time as Shangguan Bing Shui's beautiful voice echoed through the clouds. She was in the middle of a jump making it impossible to do anything else. Boom! The ice shield managed to withstand the fierce shot for a few seconds before turning into small ice fragments that rained down everywhere. Fortunately, that time was more than enough for Shangguan Bing Shui to complete her trajectory. Lady Shangguan, are you all right? The combat helicopter pilot shouted hurriedly. 
His face was going anxious and serious as he performed evasive maneuvers, trying to get as far away from the magic cannons as possible and just like his companions launching missiles when the opportunity presented itself. Focus on your task. Shang Guanbing Shui shouted in reply before kicking hard and jumping off the helicopter. She activated Ice Maker just in time, creating a platform of ice that she used as a thruster to kick with every drop of her power and launch herself towards the nearest goblin zeppelin. The helicopter pilot gritted his teeth and kept moving. The explosions echoed one after the other and with limited vision due to the clouds of mana. It was difficult to dodge properly but at the same time, it made it easy to hide in the sky. Die! The eyes of the goblin standing on top of the zeppelin Shangguan Bing Shui was heading towards widened and after letting out a ferocious roar he launched the bone arrow he had been charging for. Several seconds. Bang! The distance between Shangguan Bing Shui and the goblin was about 1,000 meters, but all she saw was a flash of yellow light before the arrow hit her. This was a really powerful skill launched by a third order existence. Boom! The surrounding clouds of mana were dispersed as the explosion mingled with the white lightning, creating chaos of astonishing magnitude in the skies. The goblin sighed in relief when he saw that his attack hit the target correctly. His skill, Invisible Arrow, was named that way because the enemy would only be able to see the last flash of light just before its body was hit and unless the agility difference between him and the enemy was too high, it was an attack that simply could not be avoided. However, the goblin was a third-order existence that focused on agility since his job was related to archery. Therefore, he believed that there was no way his agility was inferior to that human female's. At the very least, the difference should not be big. Just at that moment, just a split second after the attack hit something and the goblin relaxed, a silver flash shone in the creature's line of sight. Kyle, be careful. The anxious roar of another goblin in the distance mingled with the crack of fierce thunder. Despite the warning, the goblin called Kyle could no longer move with complete freedom. Because the lower half of his body had at some moment been enveloped in thick layers of ice that would require two to three seconds to break apart. Shang Guanbing Shui, who thanks to her great combat experience, as well as a bit of luck had used the second activation of lightning movement to create a clone of herself at the last moment and then, used the momentum of the explosion to get closer to the goblin faster, appeared from behind the creature. Her blue eyes were so cold that just looking at her could send chills down anyone's spine. Her sword turned into a silver flash that lit up the skies when she activated Cosmic Sword. Swoosh! The silver light sliced and passed beyond Kyle before continuing to fly and cut a cloud of mana into two halves, crushing even the lightning in the process. Kyle's body was cut into two perfect halves from the bottom to the top. Blood splattered everywhere and the internal organs were quickly blown away by the strong winds. Shang Guanbing Shui immediately picked up the green-colored orb and put it in her bag before stomping hard on the zeppelin to launch herself towards another attack helicopter that happened to be flying. Closer. Boom. It hadn't even been a second since she'd been away from there when the goblin zeppelin from before exploded, turning into a huge fireball that slowly began to fall from the sky and picking up speed with every passing fraction of a second. The skies lit up brightly and Shangguan Bing Shui winced as the shockwave resulting from the previous explosion mercilessly struck her back. Amidst the cataclysm occurring in the sky, an insignificant sound of pain slipped from her tightly closed lips as her body was sent flying out of control. She quickly created an ice shield several meters ahead and ignoring the pain she was suffering internally, she stomped hard in another direction. Boom! Not long after, the shield was completely destroyed after receiving two cannon shots and three magic attacks at the same time. If Shangguan Bing Shui had taken just an instant, her body would have been reduced to ashes. This had been the battlefield where Shangguan Bing Shui had been fighting with her life on the edge every second for over 20 minutes. Because Shangguan Bing Shui was being attacked from all directions, she had no choice but to spend most of the time dodging and moving through the sky in search of the best opportunity before launching a safe attack. So far, Shangguan Bing Shui had managed to kill four third order and ten second order enemies, she had also shot down a total of seven zeppelins by herself. However, the number of zeppelins destroyed so far counted over twenty. There were some zeppelins that were shot down by the experienced pilots of the combat helicopters, at the end of the day. Although the zeppelins were much more powerful than a combat helicopter built with the technology of the past, the goblins were not brilliant creatures, and did not have rich experience in the air like the pilots of the Chinese army. Therefore, after being hit by a couple of missiles at crucial points, there were two or three zeppelins that fell from the skies and crushed countless goblins on the ground. As for the other part of destroyed zeppelins, they were all destroyed by the goblins themselves. The first time this happened, Shang Guanbing Shui was taken by surprise and suffered internal injuries when she was caught in the explosion of one of the zeppelins. 
Had she not reacted at the last moment and covered herself with a thick layer of ice containing one-third of her total mana, she would have died. That was a reminder to Shangguan Bing Shui, she was not facing humans, they were monsters. Goblins were cruel creatures regardless of whether it was unranked or third order. These green creatures did not hesitate for a second to kill the goblins inside the allied zeppelins in an attempt to kill Shangguan Bing Shui or at least inflict wounds on her. Due to all these reasons, Shangguan Bing Shui had no choice but to be very careful. Worst of all, she not only had to dodge, look for opportunities, attack, and protect herself. She also had to protect the combat helicopters. If it weren't for her, all the helicopters would have been destroyed and the pilots killed by now. However, even then, three of the combat helicopters had been shot down so far. Five minutes later, another helicopter went down. Boom! Seconds later, another helicopter was shot down. Shangguan Bing Shui gritted her teeth and even with her first-rate education couldn't help but curse softly but hatefully, damn it. The goblins had changed tactics. Instead of focusing on Shangguan Bing Shui, which was clearly the greatest danger, the goblins began to target the combat helicopters. With second and third order existences, as well as more than 35 zeppelins completely focusing their attacks on them, no matter how effective and brilliant the human pilots were, their fighter helicopters were simply deficient and they quickly began to fall. Seconds later, another helicopter was shot down by a magical lightning bolt launched by a goblin that clearly focused on magic more than any other statistic. The goblins had discovered Shangguan Bing Shui's weakness, the combat helicopters. She needed the combat helicopters as a foothold and without them, it would be a matter of time before her mana would be depleted by creating constant ice platforms. Without the helicopters as a foothold, Shangguan Bing Shui would have to use the zeppelins. But this would leave her open to suffer more injuries and attacks that would quickly drain her stamina, and she might even die due to how risky it was to use her enemy's territory as a foothold. The worst part of all this was that Shangguan Bing Shui could not simply abandon this battlefield and head for the ground. This was because if she allowed the area goblin force and the powerhouses she was containing in the clouds to reach the ground, the humans would be wiped out and the base would suffer disastrous consequences. To put it bluntly, Shangguan Bing Shui was in deep trouble right now and as a consequence the entire human base was. Ice Swords. Ice Spears. Ice Apocalypse. Inferno. Ice Shield. Blizzard. Time continued to pass and Shangguan Bing Shui was forced to give her 200%. Unfortunately, it was not easy to face so many powerful enemies at the same time, let alone when those enemies were supported by advanced machinery. This was not counting the fact that Shangguan Bing Shui also needed to protect the combat helicopters. Even though she gave it her all, in this kind of battlefield that did not favor her at all, the beautiful Ice Princess experienced for the first time in a long time that feeling of powerlessness that she hated so much. All of her created ice weapons were shattered by the Third Order goblins even before they approached the zeppelins. All of her ice shields were destroyed with a single hit from the magic cannons so they only delayed the inevitable when the helicopters continued to be destroyed. Her strongest skills with several minutes of cooldown time only served to eliminate five zeppelins and end the lives of five enemies. In normal times, Inferno could easily destroy tens of thousands of enemies. But due to the distance from each zeppelin to each goblin, Shangguan Bing Shui had to use such a strong skill to kill a single enemy and take down a single zeppelin. By the time there were only three combat helicopters left, Shangguan Bing Shui's chest was rising and falling heavily. Her beautiful face was as pale as paper and her eyes were slightly exhausted. A thin trickle of blood fell from the corner of her lips and dripped onto the breastplate of her armor continuously. She had really been doing her best, but she had not expected to face something like this. For the first time, Shangguan Bing Shui felt that she could not win. Ironies of life. She, who possessed all kinds of crowd control skills to buy time and fight for long periods against numerous enemies, had not even been able to persist for 30 minutes. Even more ironic, however, this was the first serious battlefield she had fought on without Byzemin. And yet, here she was, taking a beating despite having so much power in her hands. She had chosen the path she walked subconsciously, but now, Shangguan Bing Shui had realized that she needed another person whose fighting style and path were completely different from hers. There was only one person who met such requirements, but that person was far away. It had only been about 35 minutes since Shangguan Bing Shui had contacted Byzemin, and for him to arrive from the north would probably take 5 to 10 minutes more. She really had no hope it seemed. Boom! Another helicopter went down. Just when there were only two allied helicopters left, just when Shangguan Bing Shui felt her heart sinking, the sky covered by purple clouds suddenly turned deep blue. What sounded like a phoenix announcing its arrival resounded amidst the sky that was neither day nor night. 
Shang Guanbing Shui raised her head to the sky and her eyes sparkled brightly. In her pupils, a deep but bright blue flash that moved too fast even for her broke from great heights, turning into something similar to a line that linked the heavens with the earth. Boom! Under the shocked eyes of the goblins, one of the zeppelins was pierced from top to bottom by that line of deep blue light. The aircraft exploded and turned into a metal fireball plummeting to the ground, devouring the lives of the goblin pilots and the second-order goblin standing on top. However, that was only the beginning of the nightmare of the goblins and their war machines. Chapter 728 Massacre in the Sky That thin, sharp but powerful line of azure that linked the heavens and the earth at lightning speed passed so easily through the outer and inner body of the goblin zeppelin that before the machine exploded into a yellow-blue fireball there were several flashes of lightning flashing in the engine room. The second-order goblin on top of the zeppelin and approximately five of the first-order goblins piloting inside were consumed by the explosion and the flames, dying on the scene. Boom! The zeppelin fell from the sky, exploding powerfully a second time after hitting the ground. There were thousands of goblins that were caught up in this explosion and lost their lives. However, the surprise of Shang Guanbing Shui and the disbelief of the goblins was not over yet. Bang! 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 From high in the sky, beyond where normal sight could reach, approximately twenty thin, sharp blue lines like the previous one broke through the dense clouds of purple mana. The thin blue lines that linked the sky and the ground opened large holes in the clouds of mana and the white lightning flashes were engulfed by that mysterious deep blue color, creating calamitous explosions that illuminated the skies and the ground. Boom! 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 Seconds later, those twenty blue lines that had pierced with merciful accuracy through twenty goblin zeppelins, joined the first deep blue line, impacting on the ground like cluster bombs raining down from the clouds. Blue flames began to burn across the battlefield on the ground as the number of enemy zeppelins began to plummet from the clouds. It wasn't until 70% of the battlefield was engulfed by blue flames that surrounded almost the entire human base and burned fiercely scorching the lives of the goblins that Shangguan Bing Shui finally understood what those thin, sharp blue lines raining down from the clouds were. Who else besides Bai Zemin had such beautiful but at the same time deadly dangerous flames? Apparently, Bai Zemin was throwing arrows or spears of fire from great heights with such might that the flash of light persisted for a while in the trajectory traveled by the attack, giving it the appearance of laser beams. Bastard! One of the Third Order goblins roared furiously when he noticed what was happening. It was only now that the goblins came out of their daze and disbelief. That goblin pointed to the sky and shouted in a rabid voice, Fire! Fire all cannons in that direction! The magic cannons on the now 14 zeppelins immediately moved and an instant later several powerful cannon shots rang out. The sky rumbled, and all the clouds several kilometers away scattered as a result of the fierce aftershocks resulting from the explosions. Now, those with better eyesight could see from the ground the war that was taking place at an altitude of more than 10,000 meters. However, the greatest terror was not for the humans who saw the only two remaining combat helicopters that looked extremely pitiful in comparison to the giant goblin zeppelins that also outnumbered them. The greatest terror was taken by the goblins when they saw the giant object hovering in the sky 10,000 meters above the point in the sky where they were. The goblin zeppelins were large without a doubt, at 400 meters in length they were comparable to the largest American aircraft carrier in the world, this alone spoke enough of how huge they were. However, when compared to the massive warship at approximately 20,000 meters off the ground, the size of the goblin zeppelins was simply pitiful to say the least. Sky Destroyer Shang Guanbing Shui finally let out a sigh of relief, and when she subconsciously relaxed, her beautiful face twisted into a grimace of pain as with the drop in adrenaline levels coursing through her blood now that she had calmed down, she was now fully aware of how badly her internal organs ached. Boom, 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 boom. The skies rumbled and huge clouds of yellowish fire illuminated everything for miles. A part of the sky destroyer was engulfed in flames after being hit by more than 30 shots from the magic cannons located on the sides of the goblin zeppelins. However, far from feeling happy and somewhat relieved, the goblins felt helpless and terrified at the terrifying sight that greeted them once the flames began to be blown away by the strong winds. Right in the area that should have been hit by the shots from the magic cannons, a glowing golden barrier covered the giant battleship and protected it from all damage. Standing on top of it, a human man looked down with a stiff, lifeless expression on his face. Stiff and lifeless expression? Alarm bell suddenly rang in the heart of the goblin who had ordered the cannons to be fired skyward. He could clearly remember how several minutes ago, 
The human female they had been fighting and who had given them so many headaches possessed a strange skill that allowed her to clone herself. The only apparent flaw that the intelligent goblins managed to detect in this skill after seeing it in play several times was in the opaque eyes just like the figure of the man on the edge of the giant battleship. Unfortunately, the enemy attack had been executed with such accuracy and mastery that the Third Order Goblin didn't even have time to activate one of his skills before his fate hit him as hard as a divine hammer. Boom! -um. Another Zeppelin was knocked down, and with its fall, one quarter part of the body of the Third Order Goblin leading at the top burst into bloody mist before falling to the ground with the rest of his body, surrounded by purple flames. Immediately after, the wind whistled, and under the disbelieving eyes of another Third Order Goblin, a figure shot towards her. The female goblin gritted her teeth and a vicious glint flashed in her eyes as she waved her bone staff. Repel. The expression on Byzemin's face changed slightly as a powerful gust of wind charged with large amounts of mana and magic power obstructed his path. He, who was in midair, was forcefully pushed back and it was only a matter of time before he began to fall from the sky. Another Third Order goblin that had learned from Shangguan Bing Shui kicked the zeppelin and with a mighty bang launched himself towards the human male. However, the creature was shocked when in mid-flight he noticed that, strangely, that human changed his trajectory as if he had wings. Byzemin ignored the Third Order goblin who landed on another goblin zeppelin, his body moved like an arrow into the sky and in an instant reached over 500 meters high. Bow! Byzemin's body spun, and as he coldly looked at the female goblin from before, a golden flash appeared in his hands. Immediately after, a glowing blood arrow that seemed to be a precious treasure hardened in his palm and with deft movement of a master, Byzemin prepared to make his shot even with his body and the target in motion. The female goblin did not stand idly by waiting for death. She did not hesitate when she saw that the crimson arrow was suddenly surrounded by deep blue flames, identifying them as the cause of the fiery apocalypse still spreading on the ground. Light Spear Following the explosion of a pure white magic circle, a giant magic spear shattered all obstacles straight up into the sky. At the same time as the white spear reflected in his eyes, Byzemin released his grip on his bowstring. A thin flash of dull blue light fell from the clouds. A thick, glowing white light rose toward the clouds. The two attacks met halfway but did not collide with each other but merely brushed against them before continuing on their undisturbed trajectories. The female goblin had left the zeppelin the first moment after launching her attack and was currently in the air, only a few meters away from reaching a new zeppelin to use as a foothold. She believed that her attack would definitely be able to, at the very least, seriously injure the human male. Boom! However, except for the explosion of the goblin zeppelin being ripped through from side to side and destroyed, there was no other explosion. What? The eyes of the female goblin widened in disbelief as she watched her light spear continue to ascend into the sky before disappearing beyond her range of vision, how can this be possible? Under her disbelieving gaze, as well as everyone else's, the body of the human changed its trajectory several times as he moved strangely faster and faster with his eyes fixed on a new target. The expression of all the goblins hardened at the thought of having to face in the sky an enemy capable of flying and freely changing his movements, such an advantage was simply too great. Even if they had the zeppelins to lean on, that was nothing compared to being able to fly with complete freedom. Bull Force The goblin on which Byzemin had focused his eyes immediately activated a skill that boosted his strength tremendously. The muscles in his body swelled and with a mighty roar he stomped on the zeppelin beneath his feet. The Zeppelin was practically completely destroyed by the Third Order Goblin himself, however, none of this mattered to the creature who had realized that to take on someone capable of flying through the skies, he needed to move fast enough to reach his enemy before the human male changed trajectory. Overlap Regeneration, Agility in Exchange for Strength The body of Byzemin was immediately enveloped by the characteristic godly golden radiance that came with the activation of Overlap Regeneration giving him for brief seconds the ability to modify his records almost freely and granting him an appearance similar to that of a legendary divine figure. His expression was fierce and cruel, surprising the Third Order Goblin. Seeing the figure of a giant crimson-colored wolf appearing behind the body of the human male, the creature subconsciously panicked and without realizing it, the power with which he swung his mass was greatly reduced. By the time Byzemin had activated Lonely Wolf Aura and released all his murderous intent, the swinging of his greatsword covered in purple flames resulting from the union of crimson flame and the endless blue lotus flame finally reached the chest of his enemy. Boom! Boom! Two explosions caused the sky to rumble and the white lightning that surrounded the sky to disperse, slowly coming back together. At the same time as the message reporting the acquisition of soul power flashed in Byzemin's retinas, 
He felt as if his body had been hit by a truck when his left arm was smashed by the mace of the goblin. The expression on Shang Guan Bing Shui's face turned even whiter than it already was, if such a thing was even possible. It had all been too fast, only three or four seconds had passed since Bai Zemin had appeared on the battlefield and he had already accomplished things that she could not have accomplished in minutes. However, seeing him take such a huge blow and being sent flying with blood splattering all over the sky, her heart clenched. Just then, something that left her in disbelief occurred. Swoosh! The body of Bai Zemin, which had been flying backwards out of his control, suddenly spun in a wide arc and swung toward a new zeppelin. Shang Guan Bing Shui was even more shocked when her eyes caught a golden flash gleaming on his now visible arm bones. Chapter 729 Massive Scale Warfare During Several Days, Part 1 Shang Guan Bing Shui and the goblins were just equally surprised when the body of Bai Zemin stopped abruptly before shooting off in another direction. It was as if what they had seen about Bai Zemin being sent flying after receiving a full physical attack from the Third Order Goblin had been a lie, an illusion. What is this all about? Shang Guan Bing Shui was at a loss. Since when had Bai Zemin learned to fly? Besides, what was that golden layer covering his bones? Shang Guan Bing Shui's mind was exhausted from the great battle she had just experienced and her stats had dropped considerably due to the colossal effort she had put in for more than half an hour. Therefore, she did not even notice the passing seconds or otherwise she would have already joined the battle even if it meant ignoring her own safety. Bai Zemin gritted his teeth and kept blood manipulation active at all times. The pain he felt was truly inhuman, a large part of the flesh on his left arm was gone and some muscles were torn to shreds, he had lost approximately 60% of the strength in that arm. Bai Zemin could feel that he had suffered considerable injuries after taking the attack of the Third Order Goblin head-on, had he not evolved the Silver Skin skill to the next stage. Bai Zemin was sure that the attack he had just received would not have allowed him to move for quite a while. He might have even died considering the strong jolt his internal organs experienced. The female goblin from before had bloodshot red eyes as she saw that the human male had not died yet. This human had taken a full-powered attack from a hill goblin head-on but was still alive and with fiery battle intent. Hill goblins were goblins with the skills of earth-type beasts that specialized in 100% strength. However, such a powerful goblin was slaughtered with a single blow and couldn't even hurt the other party critically. Thousand Luminous Lightning Strikes The female goblin shrieked and waved her bone staff when she noticed that was targeted again. Repel was a powerful life-saving skill for mages like her, but the skill had a 5-minute cooldown time so it couldn't be used again right away. At the same time as several purple lightning bolts began to fill the sky targeting by Zemin, four of the goblin zeppelins aimed their cannons at the approximate trajectory he was making before noisily opening fire. Despite the pain, by Zemin forced himself to continue. When the sky rumbled, his skill danger sense immediately warned him and he didn't even think twice about activating gravity manipulation X30. Bang! Bai Zemin's body immediately began to plummet, creating small explosions for every few meters he crossed. He felt the attacks of the magic cannons pass by at a considerably close distance and sighed in relief when he realized that successfully managed to avoid them. However, the worst was yet to come. Suddenly, Bai Zemin's body stopped falling as he deactivated gravity manipulation. Like a spring that received some kind of impulse, Bai Zemin shot back up into the sky and in mere fractions of seconds he soared hundreds of meters with his eyes fixed on the female goblin. She was the biggest threat to him next to the zeppelins, and he needed to take her out of the game no matter what. It was at that moment that a thick chain of bright lightning rained down from the sky and completely blocked Bai Zemin's position. Surprisingly, a kind of smoke began to fill the area even before the lightning strikes completely fell. This attracted the goblin's attention, and one of them soon managed to identify what was going on. Damn! This bastard covered the whole area with tiny threads. He must be using them to move like that. By Zemin's expression was indifferent, he didn't care if he was caught since nothing would change. On the other hand, his concern was the lightning flashes falling toward him, he couldn't avoid them. His eyes flashed with a tinge of madness, and instead of at least trying to retreat to suffer the least amount of damage, he pushed himself further into the sea of lightning. Soon, his body was devoured by the bright lightning strikes. The eyes of the female goblin flashed with delight, however, she didn't have time to delight too much as not even a second later something that chilled her blood occurred. Bang! Bai Zemin's body broke beyond the sea of lightning with his fierce eyes still focused on the female goblin as if he obsessed over her and wasn't willing to take his eyes off her even for an instant. He was surrounded by a thin layer of blue fire and all around him were white sparks that slowly were dissipating. The bright lightning flashes from before had caused considerable damage on his body, and there were small holes in his armor that showed the scorched flesh underneath. 
His shoulder had even been pierced by a lightning strike directly until one could faintly see the bone below the flesh. By the time the female goblin took a step back and tried to activate another skill, Byzeman had stepped forward and activated Lonely Wolf Aura again, making her movement stall for a brief moment. However, just as Byzeman stepped onto the zeppelin and raised his greatsword above his head preparing to slaughter the enemy in front of him, out of the corner of his eye he saw the other Third Order goblin standing on top of the zeppelin charging towards him. Bang! Ah! Uh, the Third Order goblin specializing in agility was very surprised when the human in front of him suddenly disappeared. His bone sword sliced through the air, creating a powerful bang in the process. The last thing the agility type Third Order goblin saw were the terror-filled eyes of the female goblin in front of him, looking past his body frozen in fear. Boom! The upper half of the agility type goblin's body exploded in a bloody mist and the powerful air cannon resulting from the ferocious swing of Byzeman's weapon exploded straight out. The body of the female goblin was hit by the shockwave because she was too close, and as she spat out several mouthfuls of fresh blood with internal organs mixed in, she was sent flying out of the zeppelin that was slowly starting to fall even though it had not been targeted. After using Shadow Blink to appear behind the agility type Third Order Goblin, Byzeman picked up the soul stone that had fallen next to the corpse quickly before running to the edge of the zeppelin. Crimson Thunder Dragon's last words disappeared from his hands and an exquisite golden bow appeared in its place after a glow shot out from his chest. The eyes of the Third Order Goblin female opened slightly as the wind blew hard around her in the process of falling, a glint of unwillingness shone in her stare. In her dark pupils, the image of Byzeman standing at the edge of the zeppelin and aiming at her with a new crimson arrow ringed by blue flames reflected clearly. Bang! The arrow surrounded by blue flames shot out with lightning speed and just like before traced a thin pale blue line in a way that it looked like a laser beam rather than an arrow fired by a person. Boom! The female goblin's body was struck in the chest by the arrow and several chunks of flesh fell off before being incinerated. The cry of pain that sounded more like an unbearable howl could be heard even in the midst of the chaos that was raging in the skies, and as she fell towards the ground now faster than before. Her body was engulfed by blue flames that quickly devoured her already half-finished life. Boom, boom, boom. Hearing the two terrifying explosions followed by an even more powerful one and after identifying them as the result of the cannons of one of the enemy zeppelins and the attack of a third order. Goblin, by Zemin gritted his teeth and got ready to withstand the impact by activating overlap regeneration. However, the air around him suddenly froze at incomprehensible speeds and subconsciously he sighed in relief. Boom. Byzeman's body was sent flying and a slight groan of pain slipped out of his lips along with a thin trickle of blood as the vicious shockwave mercilessly lashed his back. As he plummeted, Byzeman noticed shards of broken ice raining down from above, as well as the downed zeppelin falling faster and faster from the clouds. Shangguan Bing Shui sighed in relief when she saw Byzeman once again using those blood threads to soar into the sky. She had just spent a good portion of her remaining mana to make an ice shield strong enough to mitigate most of the damage from two cannon shots and an attack of a third order power. Still, she was truly surprised, and the reason for her surprise was the same as that of the goblins that were still alive. Damn it. What the hell is wrong with these threads? No matter how we tear them apart they all come back together. The blood arrows that Byzeman had used earlier to destroy the goblin zeppelins with support of the endless blue lotus flame were not blood arrows crafted as casually as they seemed. They were blood arrows that contained 100 points of mana each. So much mana compressed into a single small arrow. But, the process was necessary. This was because every time those blood arrows pierced a zeppelin, it immediately disintegrated into hundreds of thin, almost invisible threads. After launching more than 20 blood arrows, each containing 100 points of mana thanks to the support of overlap regeneration, the entire area was practically covered by more than 2,000 blood threads that Byzeman could control at will thanks to his blood manipulation skill. He could now move everywhere around the zeppelins as if it was his backyard, best of all, as long as the blood on the threads did not completely disappear, Byzeman would be able to endlessly reattach them until his mana was completely depleted. Byzeman was not only powerful, cautious, and had the constant desire and will to advance further. He was also a brilliant strategist. It was thanks to him planning long before jumping into the battlefield that he had emerged victorious in every fight so far. Bing Shui Shangguan Bing Shui jumped in place as the assault helicopter moved through the sky swiftly, the pilot was trying his best to get away from such a dangerous battle zone. By Zeman's body was covered with wounds of all kinds, some seemed to be no big deal, but Shangguan Bing Shui could see the glow of white lightning still flickering in the flesh of his body and around. 
The barely hidden gold-colored bones, it was clear that the attack of the third-order goblin female was still punishing him. Even then, his eyes were as fierce as those of a raging wolf and his voice as powerful as a lion's roar amidst the clouds of mana, soaring fearlessly through the skies. Help the rest and leave this to me. Shang Guanbing Shui's expression changed when she heard this. Did he want to fight alone against the now six to seven third order goblins? If the battle was on earth then she wouldn't be so worried, but in the sky? Bai Zemin's body seemed to be on the verge of collapse. Bai Zemin didn't wait for an answer as he launched himself towards another zeppelin. At the same time as he used several blood threads to dash and dodge several magic attacks and cannon shots from the magic cannons, the golden ring on the little finger of his right hand glowed. The Sky Destroyer seemed to receive some kind of command, and for the first time since it made its appearance before the goblins, it moved from its state of quietude. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse, Chapter 730 Massive Scale Warfare During Several Days, Part 2 The Sky Destroyer that giant warship that had been just hovering 20,000 meters above the ground and 10,000 meters above the aerial battlefield where Bai Zemin and Shangguan Bing Shui were facing the flying fleet of the goblin race, that ship that had been silent until now, finally moved. Noticing the steady descent of the giant battleship, the Third Order goblins panicked and hurriedly used the power of the Zeppelin cannons to attack with everything they had. There were even some goblins that directly slammed their weapons into the sky in an attempt to use shockwaves to cause some extra damage. However, none of that worked. Boom, 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 rumble. The thunderous explosions silenced the steady crackle of bright lightning that serpentined like flood dragons through the endless clouds of mana. The sky rumbled loudly as the shock waves pushed the clouds of mana away from the area affected by the explosions and huge flares of fire illuminated the strange day-night condition. By the time the fire clouds were slowly dying down and dispersing, the Sky Destroyer continued its descent, neither fast nor slow. The giant warship's speed was not affected at all just because it had taken several bombardments. Damn with that damn thing, growled under his breath a third-order goblin with a glowing scarlet wooden bow. Realizing that the Sky Destroyer was not attacking and was only descending, the goblin archer shouted loudly, let's attack these humans first. That ship clearly has some trouble or else the cannons would have already opened fire from the start. The expression on Bai Zemin's face was indifferent as his body moved through the countless thin blood threads. He knew that the Sky Destroyer would only be able to cause pressure thanks to its size and the secondary cannons visible from the outside for a very limited amount of time before his enemies realized something was wrong. Actually, it wasn't that Bai Zemin didn't want to use the Sky Destroyer's power to wipe out these enemies, but the problem was that there was no point in doing so. The reason? The reason was very simple, but at the same time complicated. Several minutes ago, after Lilith advised by Zemin to push the speed of the Sky Destroyer even if it meant consuming more energy than normal. Standing on the deck of the battleship, by Zemin had a slight frown on his face as his eyes looked towards the distant horizon with anxiety in his heart. Although it was still some time before he reached his desired destination, by Zemin could not help but want to go out on the deck of the ship as if being there would speed up the process of arrival or shorten the way. Due to the process of evolution of the world, the laws were getting stronger and thus everything was a lot more fierce compared to the past. The strong winds blowing at 20,000 meters as the battleship moved at high speeds were nothing to scoff at. A soul evolver below level 15 could be cut into millions of tiny cubes of flesh by the powerful wind blades and a soul evolver below level 20 with poor stats would easily be swept away from the ship. By the current before being turned into ashes by the countless lightning bolts of mana. Now that this world, Earth, is evolving, you'd better prepare yourself for some not-so-small changes. A voice that sounded low but clear, sweet but firm, kind but direct, rang out beside him. Lilith was standing next to Bai Zemin, except that unlike him who was looking off into the distance, she was looking at him out of the corner of her eye. She continued, as you well know, every world has its own laws. A prime example of this is space law. In the past, the natural spatial barrier of the Earth was punctured when you used a concentrated attack on a small area that exceeded the capacity of the spatial law in that area of the natural barrier. However, with the evolution of Earth, the spatial barrier will become countless times more powerful in comparison so unless you use some kind of world destroyer level attack I don't think such a thing will happen again. World destroyer level attacks. By Zemin had heard from Lilith previously about such a thing. As it suggested, a world-destroying level attack was an attack with the potential to destroy at least one entire planet. By Zemin possessed the ability to launch an attack of such a magnitude, and had launched it on Oblon World. However, he would never use it on Earth even if his life depended on it, in fact, 
It was unlikely that he would use such an attack even on other worlds unless the residents of such a world or such worlds were cruel existences like the Azura race. Not only will the space law and thus the barrier protecting Earth become stronger, but all laws will become more powerful. Lilith explained quickly but clearly so that he understood everything. With your current agility and some extra boost you should be able to break through the sound barrier of the past Earth with ease. But it's not possible for you to do that unless you make it up isn't it? This is because mana is strengthening not only the living beings but also the world and therefore its laws. You can think of the world as a physical body and the laws that compose it as the internal organs. Pa NDA. No vel this is because in the future, people on earth will be able to learn skills by studying the laws of the world they live in. This is a completely normal thing but one that takes many years to achieve. At least under normal circumstances, that is. Lilith clarified at the end, remembering that the person next to her and some others close to him were anomalies of the universe. The problem is that during the process of evolution, things happen that in the worst case scenario can lead to a race becoming extinct. Extinction of a race. Byzemin muttered and the frown on his face became even more pronounced as the bad feeling in his heart began to grow. Lilith remained silent for a few seconds to reorganize her words and before continuing with her explanation she asked, Do you remember what I told you a while back? Regarding monsters such as goblins? By Zemin's expression suddenly changed and in a single second his face turned extremely ugly as a memory that he had almost completely forgotten flashed in his memory. It seems like you had forgotten. Although it's understandable with all the crazy things that have happened to you in such a short time, Lilith sighed before nodding, New Age monsters. Not only can these monsters be born by normal means, but they can also form when the conditions are right and there are huge amounts of mana concentrated in an area. Damn it. Byzemin couldn't help but curse as he looked at his surroundings with some apprehension. The entire earth was overflowing with mana. Lilith naturally felt his frustration, she tried to help by gently caressing his face while whispering softly just like a bride trying to calm her enraged groom, calm down. It's at times like this that you need to keep your composure, remember that. With the loss of the passive effect of the stone heart skill, the emotions of Byzemin were no longer suppressed as before. Therefore, his mood was no longer as similar to that of a robot or an intelligent machine and his thoughts were affected by his emotions. However, Byzemin had also evolved a lot compared to his past self, he was no longer that boy from before who did not know how life worked. After several deep breaths, he closed and clenched his fists a couple of times before exalting heavily and nodding silently. The density of mana that the earth currently has is simply abnormal but considering that nothing in this world has been normal since the beginning I don't think that's that surprising to you. Lilith looked at Byzemin carefully, and seeing that he had actually calmed down enough to listen and think, she continued, therefore, it is to be expected that many new age monsters will be born. This will happen not only here in China, but it is happening now all over the world. How many would die during this earth evolutionary process? Hundreds of thousands? Millions? Mankind was already on the brink of annihilation with the advent of the soul record alone, the zombies and mutant beasts alone had been more than enough to force humans into a rat-like corner. However, even before mankind had time to set foot firmly in the new world, that same world was changing again. The desire to become stronger was so overwhelming that Byzemin felt as if a bomb was buried inside his chest. He needed to become stronger, a lot stronger. His power was enough to sweep away everything in the Earth's first evolution stage, however. Byzemin was no longer so confident now that the world was growing and its inhabitants were continuing to evolve while he was stuck in the First Order. Lilith continued, as you know, that woman, Shangguan Bing Shui, is currently facing an army of millions of goblins. These goblins, at least for the most part, were not born by natural means but are creatures born by the high density of mana in this place. Byzemin surveyed the surroundings and his heart clenched. Tornadoes of mana could be seen in the distance, whirling and sweeping away anything in their path. Byzemin had seen a second-order tiger get caught by the eye of the storm before, never to leave again. Those things were packed with mana and their explosion would only release that mana, making the current situation even worse. Besides, I'm afraid the current situation is even worse than it could be, Lilith smiled bitterly as she spoke these words. She really didn't want to give her beloved so much bad news one after another, but what else could she do? Lilith couldn't just keep quiet when she had the capacity to offer valuable information that would help Byzemin prepare for what was coming and thus avoid countless troubles, or could she? That would be selfish indeed. The expression on Byzemin's face was quite relaxed at this point. Things were already so bad that he was already growing numb. Remember that mana womb you killed in college? That worm? Exactly, that worm. Lilith nodded before saying bitterly, it seems one of the smart goblins managed to find something similar. 
That goblin happened to be coincidentally near the base of the faction called Chinese Renaissance just as the world began to evolve. Now, what that woman is facing is basically an almost infinite army. No matter how many they kill, the goblins will continue to come out. Cool. Baizemin nodded indifferently. Well, it's not like it's all that bad. At the very least, those goblins will only be first-order creatures at most and the vast majority won't even be above level 5. All the other goblins will be part of an army that already existed in the first place. Lilith tried to find the good point in all this even though it was difficult. However, Baizemin had found the crucial point. Lilith, you said that the army is almost infinite. That means this army can be annihilated, doesn't it? That's right. Lilith nodded. Her face became serious and she said in a clear voice, until the earth completes its evolution and absorbs all the excess mana to strengthen itself, all they have to do is withstand the goblin attack. They themselves will fall as the days go by. Cool. Baizemin repeated, and as he looked up at the chaotic sky, he sighed, it looks like we will be in a massive scale warfare for several days.